Remember the old Bible epics of the 1950s? Son of God is nothing like them. Even if you didn't know the background of Roma Downey, you'd probably suspect the film was produced by people who love God. It starts out with Jesus' pre-incarnate existence, telling us that he was with Adam, with Noah, and with Abraham. That's not your typical Hollywood approach. Jesus, played by Diago Morgata, comes across as a real person, full of life. Your sins are forgiven, my son. I thought only God could do that. Which is easier, to say his sins are forgiven, or say he gets up and walk. He's in sharp contrast to Caiaphas, the high priest, who only has religious traditions instead of a personal relationship with a God he supposedly serves. If you're a regular churchgoer, you've undoubtedly heard about the life of Jesus over and over again. But this time, it's like being a fly on the wall. Let me give you an example. One of my favorite passages is in John, where it tells about the evening of the Last Supper. In Son of God, you have cutaways, showing the reactions of the very real characters. Also, the music supports the mood of the scenes. In the best sense, this is how film differs from a book. Son of God makes good use of dramatic irony. Judas' betrayal of Jesus contrasts with Nicodemus edging away from temple leadership. Jesus' prayer and the Garden of Gethsemane juxtaposes with the empty prayer of Caiaphas. A scene of the Passover sacrifice of a young lamb alternates with a view of the dying Jesus. I'll admit it, I got teary-eyed watching Jesus' suffering, and teary-eyed again when Mary Magdalene took John and Peter to the empty tomb. Peter said, he's gone. I am coming soon. John replied, no, he's back. So how do I sum it up? I predict when you see this movie, you'll have an experience with God, if you let it happen. This is Steve Eastman reporting. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.